Hmm? Say what? I don't see you behind me. That's a good thing. What she mean right. by that? Bro, it's that short man slander, bro. I know she ain't short man slandering her man like that. My boy stood on business, though. I might be little, but you know what ain't little. Stand on business, short king. Oh, I feel some type of way. Start, stand on business, my short king. Okay? We the same size laying down. Uh, it's been about an hour. He changed location three times. Three times. If you're not gonna take this seriously, leave me alone! You went into my DMs and messaged me from the okay! Leave me alone! I put a wig on up for makeup on like if you're not gonna take this serious, this is my life! Like everyone is saying, oh posting this and that, that this is my life, this is my profile. If I wanna post me trying to go on dates and party love, I can do that. But don't go in my and they messaged me and said that you want to meet up and then you change the location three times and then after that delete your number and block me from BLK and Instagram and online. Leave me alone! Oh, no, nah, that's... That's foul. That's foul. That's, that's bad behavior. That's bad for business right there. <sighs> Hey guys, I am going on my date today. I have my hair by Lenny Monet. She gives me a a wig for, for just for being so kind. She gives me that. I have this beautiful dress. I have this necklace. I love this necklace. My sister gave it to me a while back. And I am wearing a beautiful matte lip. And I can't wait. I'm so excited. I, Guys, you guys know I just moved. So I was talking to this guy for a little bit. And I can't wait to go. I'm so excited. I feel so beautiful. I can't wait. And I want to thank everyone that's been supporting me on the journey. Even when TikTok want to block my live. But it don't matter. I wanted to go live and... I'm not gonna lie, after seeing what happened and then coming back to seeing how happy she was to go on that date, that's foul. We don't talk about that. We don't talk about the niggas that be playing games with these females. Propaganda is a motherfucker. And I know I do react to a lot of videos of females saying stupid shit, but we don't never talk about the ones that are actively trying to find love and come across these boys. To see how genuinely happy she was to go on that date, for this man to cancel, change the location, and block her and everything. It looked like she done paid to get her makeup done. She done paid to put a wig on. She done paid to make... She said, I feel so beautiful. I feel so beautiful. Nice. All right. Hi. Three, two, one. Yep. See ya. Holy oh shit! my god. Nice. So we got a two for one special today, back to back. It's that's probably one of those things I know I would never want to do. Shout out to people that are brave enough to jump out of planes. That don't even look like it was a plane. Like where the fuck was he at that it was that high up? And make this make sense. So I have a four and a five year old and a newborn, one baby daddy. My four and a five year old, um, we're at home, and my, I was in the hospital with my newborn baby. So, when my baby daddy picked me up, he had his girlfriend in the car. Did I know he had a girlfriend? Yes. We co-parent with our four- and a five-year-old. So, on Mondays, he drops the kids off. On Mondays, he picks the kids up. He usually comes inside on Mondays and plays with his kids or packs their stuff or bathes, whatever he tells her that he's doing while she sits outside. <laughs> jack Anyway, so while she sits outside for about 45 minutes. Now, on one of those Mondays, jack was conceived. Um, and then we Whoa. had jack -a He was still living with his girlfriend, but we had jack So, yeah. And make this make sense. 
Hold on. Now, I hope Jackaroo is a nickname for Jack, okay? Because if you went out there and added Root to Jack, you a savage. But at the same time, if you fucking your baby daddy while his girlfriend is sitting in the parking lot, you've been a savage. That is diabolical behavior. This is why it's hard to date somebody that have history. History never dies. If me and my wife were to get divorced right now and she get a new man, I'm pretty confident that I'll still be able to clap them cheeks. Imagine the day they see you again. And you are just, well, worse. I ain't gonna lie, I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting that at all. Um, don't feel bad, sis. We 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 all <laughs> we all go through them hard times. I lost 20 pounds and it's so hard for me to lose that other 20. I've been trying, it is so hard for me to lose that other 20, bro. It's like I I plateaued. I'm saying this one after I just ate some Chick-fil-A, but but I'm gonna go work it out. Don't sleep. This is my first meal of the day, so I'm gonna go work it out. And I think if yeah. men were forced to be homeless, they would learn how to be better men. Because uh, that's what made men manly in the past, was having to build houses and stuff. Mm -hmm. If we just made men be homeless for like a year, I think it would fix a lot of problems. That would be society. so good. Especially because we're not, we, we don't force men to do military anymore. Like they used yeah. to. They, make them homeless for a year. Let's see how they fucking... Yeah, make them just figure it out. Make them homeless in a country where they don't know the language. And oh, that yeah. way they really, they really have to go through something, and then maybe they can like... Be appreciative, but I think if yeah. men were forced to be homeless. Men should be homeless and forced to live in countries where they don't speak the language. Who hurt you? Who hurt you? That should be homeless and forced to live in another country. Don't generalize us. It's a lot of us out here fighting for y'all to be comfortable. Me and my wife was having a conversation one time. She asked me, hey, if you walking down the street and you saw a guy beating up on a, on a, on a female, what you going to do? And my response was, jump in. I'm going to beat that ass. She was mad. She was upset. She was like, yo, you have a family. Fuck her. And I feel where she's coming from, but something in me is not going to feel comfortable watching a grown-ass man put his hands on a female. So when you say things like that and you generalizing men, you talking about Niggas like me, who's not gonna be able to stand aside and watch somebody hurt you, even though I probably don't know you. I swear, if I could go back in time and tell the woman that stood up for our right to work, I would. I swear, if I could go back. I was just talking about that. <laughs> I was just talking about that. I swear, if I can go back in time and see the woman who stood up for our rights to work, I would tell her to shut the. <laughs> That's funny. Would you live here if rent was only fifty dollars a month, water, lights, and gas included? No. No way. Is it China? This how they get down in China? This how they getting down in China, but don't sleep. Don't sleep. It's some of y'all living in the hood right now. When y'all turn your lights off, that's how your living room and that's how your kitchen be looking. Don't sleep. You feel what I'm saying? I grew up in the hood too. My house was clean as hell, boy, but when them lights went out, hmm. When them lights went out, them people came out to play. And it's not a matter of you being dirty. If you live in New York, you know. If your neighbors got roaches, you got roaches too. If you got roaches in your basement, you got roaches too. If you live next to the Chinese store, you feel me? Because everybody had a, a Chinese restaurant on their block. If you live next to the Chinese restaurant, if you live next to the corner store, we all had a corner store on our block. Bro, yeah, nine times out of ten, you got roaches. Like I said in my previous videos, man, I used to get upset when people used to come to school and they see one roach. One roach and start jumping on chairs and acting like it's a new discovery. Like, no, nigga, you live in Brownsville. I know you got roaches. You live in East Flatbush. I know you got ro You live in Crown Heights. I know you got roaches. Stop it. Stop it. Stop with the theatrics. Tell them about the freak-off, Diddy Jr. Diddy Jr., tell them about the freak-off. 
He calling the police, y'all. He calling, no, I don't give a, listen. No, you know what you did. Your body slammed on the floor. Come on, police, police. Tell them the real you. Tell them the real you. Tell them, tell them the real you. Tell them the real you and why we're here today. Tell them why we're here today. Tell, shut boy. Refuse to remove me. Why? 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 Because the commotion. How did the commotion start? What did, what, what did we talk about? What did I ask of you? All of that is irrelevant. Okay, so you calling the bullies. Like a p Like a p Y'all, guess what? Over what? Over what? Because he want hoes over the house while his kids is here. While you like to have hoes, drugs, and and weed, alcohol, mushrooms, and prostitutes in the house while his kids are here. Everyone has asked him to stop, but he will not listen to nobody. This is what's going on. This is the tea. While the is in the house, I asked him not to bring the in the house. I even came over here to help him with these kids because he won't want to. He won't watch these kids. Tell him about the freak off, Diddy Junior. Diddy Junior, tell him about the freak off. Tell them about the f freak off. Tell them the truth. Tell these people the truth. Oh, shut the f up. You don't give a fuck up none of these kids. Do y'all see a fucking picture in this house of a fucking kid? He don't care about these kids. All he care about is doing drugs, drinking alcohol, fucking these hoes. That's what you care about. So let's go. I'm a diddy bop the fuck up out of here. You and your freak off. You can get back to your freak off in a minute. You'll be next. You'll be next. You'll be next. Oh. You'll be next. Your stories will be coming out next. He gonna say my daughter crying. Uh, you gotta go. But the hoe gonna stay, huh? The hoe gonna stay. The hoe gonna stay. Excuse me. The hoe gonna stay. The hoe oh, gonna stay. She trying to bait him. The hoe gonna stay. She trying to bait you, my boy. The hoe gonna stay. Huh? Excuse me. Why can't you just be at home with your kids? Why can't you just get out? Why you just can't be at home with the kids? Excuse me. Why you can't be at home with the kids? Is that hard for you to lay in the bed and lay down with your kids? No, I've done it before. No, you don't do it. That's the problem. That's why I'm here. And you know that. And you know that. And you know that, though. And you know that. And you know that. I'm on that. Shut up. Shut up. Shut your up. Man, shut your up. Shut your up. Take care of your kids and shut the bitch up. Shut the fuck up. Mr. Clean. Please stop playing with me before I slap the shit in you. No, shut your up. Shut your Yeah, I know I'm going to go to jail with you. That's why I'm staying. I'm staying. I'm staying far away from you. Police. Police. Shut your up. That's a big ass bed, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. You already did that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shut up. Imagine working your ass off, becoming so successful to have somebody disrespect you like that in your own house. Men, young men, older men, soon to be successful men. Choose wisely the women you sleep with. This is why I try not to do videos on rich people. Because a lot of the situations and problems they find themselves into, I just never understand. He did the right thing. He didn't put his hands on her. He did his best to ignore her. He was finna call the police. But again, what was the point of all of this? At the end of the day, I don't feel as though this was about the kids. This was really just about you embarrassing him. She just wanted to embarrass him. Every summer, every summer I... um. I go back to my hometown and I'll get like one or two of my cousins and I, you know, put them to work, the, the younger ones. I make them work inside of my warehouse and things like that, you know, just to give them something to do. And one of my cousins, I picked her up this summer that just passed and she's only 14 or 15 years old. And when I picked her up and I pulled up, now mind you, I'm pulling up at my, the house I was raised up in because my aunts, since my grandparents passed away, some of my family members still lives in the house. And so one of my aunts come out the little girl's mom and she said talk to her because everybody know you know the kids gravitate towards me and she said talk to her because she hasn't been doing right in school and as, as i got her in the car and we drove down the road and i said hey what's going on with you in school how's everything going i never told her that her mama told me anything and this baby looked at me and she said when i tell you i had to hold myself together at the light to keep from crying and let her see like that i was really in my feelings about what she said i tried to hold myself together she looked at me because although I'm their cousin, they call me auntie. Yeah. She said, auntie, you know what? I just have so much on my mind. I'm going through so much. And I was like, how could a kid, 14, say she's going through so much? But I told my kids I understand her because what she's going through 
is what I've already been through and overcame. You understand? My family has a cycle to where when the kids get 14 and 15, they raise themselves. Every summer, we all have a level of childhood trauma that affect us as adults. I didn't realize my childhood trauma is the reason I am the way I am as an adult. I'm not going to go too in depth with this. I am going to have to speak about it at some point. You know, me and my father have already spoken about it. My father's a great father. Everything I needed, my father has given me. The reason I'm so good with computers is because my father always provided technology for me. But the one thing I can say is that I wish he paid attention more. And, and we spoke about this before. And the reason I say that is because for a point in time, I, I lived with my father and my stepmother. The relationship I had with my stepmother wasn't the greatest. And I don't know if she even realized that she was doing this, but... <clears throat> so my pops would go to work at like 4, right? My pops went to work at 4 p.m. So from 4 p.m. to about 6, it was just me by myself in the house. And all I used to do was either draw or uh, listen to music. And... Here's some more use. Want some more juice? Mm-hmm. Juice. It's crazy you're going to come down here while I'm talking about this. Say hi. Hi. All right. Go pour the juice. Go ahead. Don't drop it on the floor, okay? Okay. All right. So, when when my stepmother used to come home, bro, I'd be sitting on the table drawing. And, bro, the looks she used to give me was crazy. And I was 11, 12 years old. And, like, I felt, <clears throat> I knew that I wasn't welcome. You know what I'm saying? Imagine as a 11 or 12-year-old just feeling unwelcomed in the house that you're supposed to be staying in. But what made it worse is that my father never paid attention to it. And my brother, I like, my stepbrother, but I, I consider my brother because I, I love this nigga, bro. My brother was smart, doing really good in school, you know, he went to college, and, and he's accomplishing all these things, and my stepmother made, she always rubbed it in, in my face, bro, like, she, you know what I'm saying, she, she used to, she always let it be known, while putting me down, and my father, when we used to interact, is like, he used to always compare us, he used to always compare me and my stepbrother, and I hated that shit, and he used to always say, well, you know, uh, your brother's doing this and your brother's doing that and, and what's going on? Like, why you can't do this and why you can't do that? And that used to hurt, bro. It used to hurt because here you here it is that your wife is making me feel unwelcome and making me feel like I wasn't going to amount to shit. And you're putting me down also because you're comparing me to my, my brother. And, bro, like, we be in the house. This is the last thing I'm going to say, bro. We be in the house, bro, and I would hear my stepmother talking about me. And, like, she used to refer to me in third person. Like, she used to say they and them. And I think that's why I have a problem with the whole pronoun shit now. And I try to stay away from it because for a period of time, I didn't really feel like a person. Like, my stepmother used to always refer to me as they and them when she was talking about me and my father. You know, fast forward to me as an adult. That's why when I get I gain some type of success, like I always don't feel as though I deserve it. You know, like that shit has made me into a people pleaser because I don't want people to judge me and I don't want nobody to go back to referring to me as like, you know. Cause as a child, bro, I'm I'm a fing child. Like I still to this day don't know what the fuck I did for somebody to to treat me. Like, I wasn't going to be shit. And then to add insult to injury, I used to go to school and motherfuckers used to try to make fun of me because of my clothes. I'm sitting here wearing my brother's hand-me-downs from 1994. And I'm going to school. I'm going to public school and these kids is making fun of me. And I'm talking to my father and I'm like, hey, listen, you don't have to buy me every pair of Jordans. You don't have to buy me every pair of Rockaway or Sean John. Just enough to where people would stop making fun of me. That way I could blend in. He ain't want. He never. He he ain't listen, bro. He never listened. So now I'm in school, getting in trouble. My schoolwork is good, but my behavior is bad because I'm angry. It got to the point where I almost go to jail for a violent crime in school, bro. Well, for attempting a violent crime in school, I I almost went to jail for attempting a violent crime in school, and I wasn't even like a bad kid. I wasn't bad, just angry, and that shit has really affected me as an adult. You know what I'm saying? As an adult, I be having crash out moments. Sometimes I still feel like that kid who used to be in the house scared, son. 
Like, I used to be fucking scared, my nigga. From 4 to 6 o'clock, I'd be in there peacefully drawing. Around 6 o'clock, 6.02, I know when she was about to come home, my fucking heart just beating out my fucking chest, bro. Beating out my fucking chest, bro. Damn, I had vowed that I would never talk about this shit on YouTube. <laughs> Oh, I vowed that I'll never, I'll never talk about this shit on YouTube, bro. But I still haven't gotten over this shit. I still walk around with this chip on my shoulder, like I don't deserve. I'm scared to believe in myself. I have a hard time believing in myself. 